Hey, what's up guys? I'm Josh. So, uh, Focal has come out with the Clear MG and that's this thing right here. We're going to be doing a, an unboxing here and a, a quick look at uh, the first impressions of uh, what I think about this. Before we get started, full disclosure, I'm actually working with headphones.com and Andrew from Resolve Reviews to uh, get this uh, over here. And uh, I wanna send a big thank you to them. Uh, you can find links to their website for this product in the description down below. Okay, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. So one of the things that uh, Focal has always been good at really is an unboxing experience. Uh, and I don't think the unboxing experience has changed all that much, but what I think has changed is uh, a couple cosmetic things and uh, the driver material type. So before they were using a aluminum and magnesium driver, it was primarily aluminum though, they called it an aluminum driver. And now they switched over completely to magnesium. Now magnesium offers a few things. Um, one, it's very, very light. Uh, it, they used to actually make old race car components out of it. It's a very, very light material. It's also very structurally strong. It's, it has a high structural integrity. All right, so here's the outside of the box, clear MG, magnesium, and this is the professional version. What I was able to find online is the earlier version of this, the original clear and the clear professional, which is kind of red and black themed versus the silver of the typical clear. What I was able to find online was that they apparently were exactly the same. Just the only thing that was different was the, was the colorway. I don't know if they changed anything from this model to the regular clear MG. And what I'm kind of concerned about is that the clear MG, the traditional one, is actually, uh, the launch was delayed greatly from the launch of this version. So they may have changed some stuff going from the professional version to the more regular version. But unfortunately, since I don't have a clear MG here, I unfortunately can't verify that even though I would really like to. Okay, so this never disappoints for an unboxing experience, does it? Customer care, you know, I actually bought a uh, Triumph yesterday and uh, going to the Triumph of Seattle location, just, this reminds me a lot of that. Like everything you touch there has like really a nice, uh, materials, their pamphlets are nice, their motorcycles are nice, uh, staff was great. It was pretty awesome actually, good experience. Okay, so this is a bit different and uh, unless there's a cable in here, which we'll verify in a second, I think this is just one cable. So normally it came with two um, and they used to have, I actually much prefer this cable, I can tell you already. They used to have a cable that was very similar to this headphone, which is the Lex. And this is what used to be the, uh, the cable and as you can still, still see it's it's kinked so i'm really glad they chose to go with this more traditional uh kind of uh extension cable look i'm not sure if that's an extra pair of pads or not or just the stock pair but i think it's probably an extra pair okay i'm not sure how how well this is going to come across on screen but this is a beautiful case this is a very cool case okay so it does come with an extra pair of cables two pairs of pads um they don't feel any different to me. And then obviously you have the cosmetic changes, which we'll go over in a second. This is, I think the best looking headphone on the market. Uh, it just looks awesome. Like that just looks incredible. You got the MG professional. Um, the grill is a little bit different. Uh, the grill used to be exactly like this Alex one. So it had this finer mesh. This still actually has an even more fine mesh underneath, uh, but they have this kind of hexagonal metal outside. This part of this actually does still feel like plastic, although this outside is definitely metal. Um, it's got a slightly different texture than uh, something like the Alex, uh, but the pads, the pad material, Alex is actually a little bit softer, but I think the original clear was like that too. Um, and then the headbands feel the same, but this actually has a little bit more, what looks like real genuine leather on top. It's a little bit uh, more uh, worn looking. To me, this feels the same build quality wise to the standard Alex. These are both relatively brand new. This one's brand, brand new. This one I've had for like a couple of weeks. Um, both feel about the same. Uh, they're about the same weight, same hinge feels. So very familiar from the typical Focal. So part of uh, Focal's design plan for this is to have a very efficient headphone. This is 55 ohms coming in at about 104 dB per milliwatt. So I think some of the benefits here is that you don't have to use some of that higher end stuff. Um, you can actually just use, uh, you know, something like a phone, which is what I'm gonna try first, then we'll throw it on the amps, and then I'll, I'll be back here to tell you what I think. I think I'm gonna do Contact by Daft Punk because uh, they just called it a quits, so, so it should be the first time I listened to them since I saw that video. Okay, so one of the big differences between the Alex 
and the clear is like the upper end of vocals, not the crispy stuff, not, you know, this, not that type of stuff. It's more like the upper body of higher end vocals. So you probably won't hear it much from my particular voice, but somebody like Sam Smith uh, or Adele, it's, it's sort of like what people would normally describe as the body of a vocalist. This almost feels like it extends that definition and sort of encapsulates a broader range of what a vocalist can sound like. Whereas this actually misses some of those areas and they don't come across quite as forward in the vocal retrieval. So this almost seems like it has a higher uh, forwardness in the frequency response in the upper mid range areas. And it comes across very, very clear. Huh. Now, one thing that's actually kind of interesting is the placement difference, which is not that substantial between these two. And this is already a really, really good headphone for this. I know it's for studio use, but I think I'd prefer a bit more soundstage. And I think that was one of the complaints I had with the standard uh, MG. Now I had to actually go back and watch my own review of the clear because it's been so long since I heard it, heard it and I just want to kind of do a refresh of uh, what I thought it sounded like back then versus what I think it sounds like now. And then of course my actual impressions of this. Um, this seems very consistent with what I remember the other thing being. It may be a little bit faster, but this also isn't a headphone that is launching details down your throat like a DT-1990, which is another studio headphone would be. And I think that might be an area that some people might prefer a little bit more information in the topper, topper registries. <laughs> I think some people might prefer a little bit more information in the top end registries. Um, and this doesn't really quite throw it at me. Of course, I'm on a phone though. So I'm gonna go test on some real amplifiers here and tell you what I think about it. <laughs> Okay, so for the last week or so, I've been actually fortunate enough to have a viewer sent in the Manly Absolute Headphone Amplifier. I'm also testing on a Gustard uh, H16 Headphone Amplifier, which is a solid state. This is obviously a tube amplifier. And then I was using the Gustard X16 with the Gustard Amp, and I was using the iFi uh, IDSD Pro with the, the Manly Amplifier here. Okay, so I wanna compare this slightly against something that would be I don't really know if they're the same classification because this really isn't marketed as a professional headphone, um, at least in the, the typical kind of studio environment use. But I have seen people use these in studio environments. And I do have an Aria here, but I feel like these are closer in, in potential purpose than the Aria is in this comparison. Maybe I'll bring that up in the, the four view if I do an AB, but I... I'll just keep it simple for this one. Okay, so interestingly, this sounds not that great on the Manly. This sounds awesome on the Manly. Really, really good. Uh, the bass boost sound, you know, makes this better, but the, the highs are just handled sort of weird on this. But this isn't a review of the Manly, so I'll just, I'll, I'll leave it there in terms of how it plays well with, with each thing. So what's interesting is the difference in sound purpose here. So this is gonna give you much more positional information. If I were, uh, you know, producing a song and I wanted to know exactly um, how far away something is going to sound, the placement of something, uh, how long it's going to take to arrive to kind of the middle area, uh, the shape it's going in terms of like the forward and back depth. That's going to be kind of what this purpose is for. Uh, it's got a lot of top end information, uh, quite a bit more than this actually. Uh, the base information is uh, about equal for information, but the strength is a little bit better on the clear MG. Uh, the mid range though, seems substantially faster on this and doesn't have the problems that this has and has some major upsides to the HD six, uh, HD 800 S, which is going to be that fullness to the vocal registry. So you get low end notes, you get high end notes and you get everything in between. And you really get this excellent understanding of what the vocalist is intending to do. And I feel like between these two, at least, this gave me an exacting and precise picture of what the vocalist was capable of and what the vocalist was supposed to sound like. And this sounds much more realistic in the mid range than this does. The bass response is good. I don't know if it's like $1,600 plain are good. Um, I think the Aria is probably gonna beat it out, but it's certainly nothing that I would go out of my way to complain about. In fact, I actually think it's quite good. Um, the only thing that I don't find to be great about this headphone right now for the price is sound staging. 
Um, but I don't know if that's the intended purpose, and I don't know if you could keep the benefits of this headphone and add soundstage. I almost wonder if once you take soundstage and kind of throw it into the mix, if it's going to suck out what this headphone is good at. And I don't think I would want that. I think that as it is, this is an excellent headphone. Uh, it's not gonna be for everybody. If you don't like that kind of more vocal focused sound, I might wanna stay away from this one. But if you really do, this is, uh, I think, a great option so far. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go and thoroughly test this and compare this against uh, everything that I have at this price and uh, present my conclusions to you in the full review. And until the next video, my name is Josh, signing off. Bye guys.